How's it going, everybody? This is the Beaks of the Finches Lab for New York State Living Environment. I'm Dr. Weaver, and I'm going to walk you through it. So here are the Galapagos Islands. This is a chain of islands off the coast of Ecuador, which is South America. And the really cool thing is that on each island, there's a different type of vegetation. It's going to host a variety of different finches based on the food source. The first step in the lab is to examine various tools, which represent various beaks of different finches, and you are also given small seeds and large seeds, and you are asked to predict which tool is best at picking up which seed. In this particular case, the tools are tweezers and tongs, and you may predict that the tweezers may be better at picking up the small seeds because they have these pointy, narrow tips, which are going to be best at gripping the small seeds, and even though they may grab the large seeds, they may just have a tougher time. And you would uh, make this prediction for each tool that you're given. Round one, we deal with an original island on the Galapagos Islands, and there's two types of finches there. One type of finch has the long pointy beak, the other one has a wide beak, and they love to eat seeds. And we simulate this by picking up seeds with either tweezers or tongs. So the goal is to pick up as many seeds as possible in 60 seconds. Round one deals with small seeds and no competition. To simulate no competition, the people pick up seeds with separate Petri dishes. And we do three trials and get the average. And here's some example data. So for the tweezers picked up 26 seeds, the tongs averaged 14 small seeds. So you can see that even though the tongs were less, they still exceeded the 13, which means they were able to survive and and live on the island happy. So the reason is, is the finches actually lived in different areas in the island or there was plenty of food. There was no struggle for a survival. So they both were happy and they got enough seeds to survive. However, what happens if there was less seeds? What happens if the finches were living in the same exact area on the island? Well, to stimulate competition, we do round two. Round two is gonna deal with small seeds with competition. And to simulate this, what we do is we eat seeds. Well, we don't eat them. That We try to gather the seeds with the tools out of the same Petri dish. So here's an example of tweezers versus tongs, three trials. And you can see the tweezers actually did survive. They got at least 13, a little bit less because there was competition, but the tongs were unable to successfully gather at least 13 seeds. So they are out. So what happens is the finch will have, to, or the finches with the with the wide beak are going to have to migrate to a different island and find a different food source. So the finches with the wide beaks could not compete for the small seeds on the original island, so they have to find a new food source, and it just so happens they find large seeds on a new island. Which brings us to the next round dealing with large seeds. We are continuing with the competition, looking at tweezers versus tongs, and seeing how many large seeds can be gathered out of the same Petri dish in 60 seconds. And of course, we need at least 13 to survive. Here's some sample data collected of tweezers versus tongs after three trials. The tweezers averaged 5.6, only while the tongs exceeded the 13 and were able to survive with an average of 15.6. So they get to stay on the island. So imagine, if you will, on this new island, there's a whole bunch of large seeds. And there's these finches with long, pointy beaks. And maybe they don't do the best job in the world, but eventually they're able to pick up these seeds, crack them open, and have their meal. Now, they could probably do this because there's not a lot of finches and plenty of seeds to go around. But here comes the finch with the wide beak. And they are like, hey, what's for dinner? And they look around and they see all the large seeds. And they're like, don't mind if I do. And they pick up the seeds with ease and they totally outcompete the finches with the long beaks. These finches with the long beaks can't survive and have offspring, so they get a little mad, and they're like, see ya later. So these finches fly in the air, and they're looking around, and they see this big island with two volcanoes, and they zoom on in. And what do their eyes see? They see lots of biodiversity. They see large seeds. They see small seeds. They see worms. Because their beaks are really good at picking up the small seeds, they're like, don't mind if I do. So they have a taste. And it's delicious. They look around, and whoa, they see other finches there. They're a little worried. They're like, don't touch my seeds. The other finches are like, not to worry, because we eat a completely different type of food. The type of food an organism eats is related to the niche or the role they have in an ecosystem. So if two organisms occupy different niches, they can coexist together in happiness. That's because there's a lot of biodiversity on this island that's going to cause a little competition.
each island of the Galapagos, there's a different environment which supports different food that is going to allow for different finches to survive based on their adaptations. Now the question is, where did the different sizes and shapes of the beaks come from? Did the finches decide the change to the environment based on the food source? Well, the answer is no. When we talk about natural selection and evolution, we can trace all these finches back to one common ancestor. In the case of the finches, the common ancestor came off the coast of Ecuador and it had one particular type of beak. Now, it underwent a series of mutations. Some mutations are good, some mutations are bad, but what all mutations have in common is that they are random events. Now, if there was no competition, it, perhaps these finches would live in harmony on the same island. But as you decrease the number of seeds, or increase the number of finches, or overcrowd the area, they will be in competition, and those that are best adapted for a particular food source will survive. And that's why we see the finches are going to radiate or migrate into different areas. This term is called adaptive radiation, where we see a variety of different species of finches, all stemming from a common ancestor on the different islands. In this lab, you have to be familiar with the finch wheel. The way to read the finch wheel is from the outside in. So if we look at the large ground finch and we read it on the way in, you can see the shape of it right there, and it's edge crushing and it eats mainly plant food. If we look at the cactus finch, it's got a similar edge crushing bill, but it's more probing and it also eats mainly plant food. Now the thing to remember for this is if they both eat the same food, they're gonna be occupying the same niche, they're gonna be occupying the same food source, so competition will occur. If the competition is too much, one will outcompete the other. What's gonna happen here if we compare the large ground finch and the large tree finch and we follow it in, we can see that they have different types of bills. The large ground finch eats mainly plant food. The large tree finch eats mainly animal food. So therefore they can coexist in the same area. There will be minimal competition and we can say that they are gonna be occupying different niches. All right guys, so the last part of the lab asks you to comment on various terms and how they relate to the evolution of the finches and how we represented these ideas in the lab activities. So the first term to consider is variation, and if you look at these finches, what's different between all of them? Of course, it's the variety of beaks. Different sizes, different shapes, that's the variation. One thing to keep in mind, guys, is the variation occurs because of random mutation events. We represented this in the lab activities by using different tools of different shapes and sizes. Next term, we got to consider competition. Now, competition is going to occur when two different species of finches are going to be occupying the same area, the same niche. They're going to be, for example, both eating the same type of food. And in particular, competition is going to increase if there's a limited supply of food or there's a larger number of finches, and they are going to see who's best adapted. So those that are best adapted are going to outcompete the other finches. We represented this in the laboratory because we used the same dish to to grab the seeds out of. So even though we had different tools and we wanted to grab the same seeds, we wanted to see uh, which ones would survive and which ones weren't. Keep in mind, guys, if they occupy different niches, uh, they can coexist in the same environment. So now we got to consider struggle for survival is the idea that if the finches do not eat enough, if there's limited food, only the best adapted will survive and they get to have babies, they get to have offspring, and they survive. The other ones are in a struggle to survive, so they actually have to migrate and leave to find an area with new food. What's gonna happen in the laboratory uh, activity, we represented the struggle for survival as having the minimal number of 13 seeds in order to have offspring and stay on the island. Now adaptation is gonna be an idea where uh, different Finches are adapted to a particular food source, and the food source might be on a particular island. So you have the long pointy beak is going to be best adapted at eating and grabbing the small seeds. The wide beak is going to be better at the large seeds. And then you have other finches that are, have beaks that are going to be better at grabbing some animal material. We represented this in the laboratory because we had... Uh, the observation that the tweezers, for example, were able to grab the small seeds better and the tongs were able to grab the larger seeds better. So that simple observation showed us a different adaption or the adaptive values of the different tools or beaks. Now the environment is going to support different food sources, so the environment is going to have different types of seeds or plants or different types of animals, and what's going to happen is that's going to determine which finches get to survive if there is going to be a survival. So the environment that we represented in the uh, lab activities was the different types of seeds. 
Okay, guys, so if we wanted to talk about uh, something related to the environment, this something, the very specific part of the environment is going to be called the selecting agent. The selecting agent is the very specific part of the environment that's going to select for a very specific adaptation. So, for example, the small seeds are going to be selecting the beaks, the finches with the beaks of the long, pointy beaks. So, there is a uh, consideration in the laboratory, there's a question that is asked of you, what happens if there is going to be an environmental change where the seeds gradually over time became larger? Well, I bet you can imagine which finch is going to be best at grabbing the large seeds. It's going to be maybe a finch with a larger beak. All right, guys, so there it is. This is the Beaks of the Finches Lab. Uh, stay tuned for more review next time.